Samples are like your car's suspension system. They are designed to handle how ZBrush is going to respond to the surface of your model. The core feature is sample radius and this acts as the shock absorber of the system. Its default settings are usually light and snappy. Set it to 2 and you are the road. Set it all the way to 0 and your butt is on the road. You can also add in stabilizers to smooth out the ride. Stabilize orientation is designed to minimize brush artifacting when ZBrush encounters a very complex surface and a lot of conflicting normals. Stabilize direction is designed to keep your alpha locked to your stroke as much as possible. Constant sample is another stabilizer that's designed to keep the sample radius constant along your brush stroke. On surface works to keep your brush stroke locked to the surface of your model and apply the alpha evenly across it. This can do a lot to smooth out brush artifacting when using the rake brush. You can also fine tune samples to prefer either the surface normal or the position of the vertices. You can even make it hug tight corners with preserve edge. This is used to great effect in all of the polish brushes. The last feature, build up, can be used to really amp up your brush stroke. So let's take a look at these features inside of ZBrush. Samples can be found in the brush palette in the samples sub palette. As we mentioned, the samples radius is really the core to the entire system. It is the shock absorber. It is the deciding factor to whether or not you're going to have a sharp, very snappy response or if you're just in a tractor trailer bulldozing over the surface of something. The best brush to really see this in effect is the Trim Dynamic Brush, one of the new brushes of ZBrush 3.5. And by default, this brush is set up to be pretty light and snappy. It's just going to go over the surface of the model, pick a general plane for me to establish. And I use this in uh, almost all of my construction of, uh, of models. I will often go to the clay brush and add on a little bit of clay, uh, which I then blend into the surface of everything else with Trim Dynamic. So now we're back into Trim Dynamic and then I'll press Alt. And this allows me to sculpt organically with the clay brush but keep things incredibly planar. So I am always making sure that my structure is intact and it becomes very hard for me to lose it. But let's see what happens when we switch this to uh, a very high setting of let's say 2. Now you saw before we were working with smallish planes but now as soon as we brush on the surface we're going to start to do serious damage. We're going to make uh, serious marks into the surface, take full control of it and start to obliterate things. Now that might be what you want or need at a particular time now if we set this to zero, then our brush is going to be a lot more sensitive, much more sensitive than it was before. And so this can be a nice rounding brush. There's a lot of things that you can do with the trim dynamic set to this. But to really see what this does and, and the, the main advantage to setting your samples to zero, let's check out the trim adaptive brush and the trim adaptive brush introduces a very important feature that really is the steering wheel within the brush system and that is the orientation features here so let's just throw that to the picker palette 
And now by default, let's go back to Trim Dynamic. By default, most brushes have Continuous Orientate on. So this gives us a nice, natural, very easy sculpting uh, process. Nothing's too dramatic. It's just constantly adjusting to the surface. We can add back and subtract away from that and just rub along the surface to build the form that we're going to get. But Trim Adaptive is going to take control of one very important part of the uh, brush system and that is the orientation of the brush when you first click on the surface so let's say for example once orientate is on I click on the forehead right about here and I drag straight up what once orientate has done is chosen that normal as the normal that all the other uh, all the rest of the surface is going to be conformed to. So as I click and drag up, I can start to, say in this area down here, start to just carve straight through. And this has a lot of use when we get into mechanical sculpting. In those situations, we may want to use Trim Adaptive to just emphasize a plane or push one plane into another. press alt and we can start to add things and this is just part of the sketching process for getting certain planes in just playing with ideas on the model because the planar brush system is largely designed to give us the freedom that we need to explore things so let's say I just wanted to sketch a hard line in there just to see what it would look like well trim adaptive is going to pick a normal and just enforce that along the way and then because focal shift is set pretty hard, we're going to get a nice hard edge there. Now let's take a look at stabilize orientation. To get a good look at that, we just need to select a polysphere. I'm going to divide it a few times. and let's look at this with the standard brush I'm going to make a very simple brush stroke just to add a little bit of complexity to our model okay and now this is really the crux of what ZBrush's brush system is dealing with as you move your brush along the, the surface notice how the brush changes direction now when it changes direction from one side to another side there has to be some effect in your brush and that's what the samples are really doing they are helping us smooth out the effect so now let's make one simple cross stroke without stabilize orientation on and then let's turn stabilize orientation on to just see what will happen. And let's make the brush a little bit bigger and just a touch more intense. And now I'm going to brush across the surface in the exact same way. Notice how that is a very different effect. And what it's really doing is taking the areas of the surface that are facing in a contrary direction to the primary orientation of our brush and just ignoring those. So it's not pushing to the let's say to the down and, and uh, to the right it's just pushing that area straight up so it's working to really stabilize this push and pull of the uh, brush stroke and keep us from going back and forth and creating the waffling which then has to get smoothed out and starts to create uh, just a little bit of a wishy-washy surface to get a good look at stabilize direction let's do what ZBrush's pop-up help tells us to do let's just load in a sphere and experiment with clay tubes now you can see clay tubes right now by default does not have stabilized direction on so as I brush along the surface you can see especially where I start to cross over areas 
the alpha itself is going to just start to dance around. See, when I come back upon the brush stroke, it dances around just a little bit. Let's turn build up on to really just power up this brush stroke. And that's going to really show you what this alpha is doing and how it's just going kind of a little bit crazy upon itself. Now, let's go over here and turn stabilize direction quite a bit up. I'm not going to take it to 100, but 94. And then as we brush on the surface, as we go back and forth, it's stabilizing the direction of that alpha. See, I hear I got a lot of dither, a lot of artifacting, but these strokes quite smooth. Now you saw me turn build up on there, so let's talk for a second about what build up does. And I'm going to switch to the clay brush. So you can see clay brush by default does not have build up on. So as I brush along the surface, back and forth, in the same area, it's going to just, just in the tiniest bit, build up extra volume. But largely, it's already sampled the normals and the positions, and it's just adding depth to what it's already sampled. As soon as we put build up on, then it's going to constantly resample the surface. So as soon as I get to this height, it's going to allow me to add further and further and further and further. So build up is on. Now I've gone along the brush surface once. I'm going to go back over the brush surface, back over it, back over it, back over it, until this just goes nuts. So this really powers up your brush stroke. And like all great powers, it can be abused. But if used lightly, then you're in good shape. Now, constant sample on surface and uh, ortho are very specific features that really require very specific examples. So we're not going to talk about those too much right now because they're not everyday sort of features. Uh, but something that does come up and is really an everyday feature, an incredibly important feature actually, is preserve edge. Preserve edge is used in most of the polish brushes as well as the uh, some of the planar brushes I believe. But let's take a look at it in the polish brushes. Let's restore this to its default. And I'm going to open up the hard polish brush or the H polish. Notice that it has preserve edge set to 30. Let's just turn that all the way off for a second and see what polish is going to really do to our surface. See how it's just averaging it out. The idea in its most fundamental sense is that it is polishing. It's, a, it's another form of smooth. You can press Alt to build volume up, but everything within its radius, within its uh, sampled area, which in this case is half my brush stroke is just going to get averaged out. And so with preserve edge completely off, this brush is going to work very well to just smooth out surfaces and, and average them out, you know, regardless of the form that you had there before. Now let's just switch that back out and let's take our preserve edge back up to 38. Now in this case preserve edge is going to work to really help us create planes because it is preserving all of the edges that we've already got built in here. Notice how it's ignoring the trough for the wrinkle there. If preserve edge was off it would just obliterate that wrinkle. But this really helps me clean up any messy surface and create you know almost more of a neoclassical form if need be so I can work loose and sandpaper that down now your brush stroke is important so keep that in mind if you're not able to get the right polish going one way try 
the other way. And most of our structure will remain intact while we do this. Now that's an organic example, but this works very well in mechanical examples as well and was primarily developed for them. So if we take a look at some sort of mechanical pack like this, hard polish is going to be used to really help us keep nice clean boundaries between form. I'm pressing alt right now to help it build that back up and I'm just looking to keep that line nice and straight. So that's a fairly comprehensive look at samples. And what you'll need to know to really take advantage of the brush system as much as possible. So I hope you enjoyed and uh, good luck.